Hey everybody, welcome to Nobody Reviews. Today we are reviewing the Eagle Industries Molly TAC V1 LBV. This is the khaki version. These are a little older. They are no longer in production from Eagle Industries. And let's get into this guy, shall we? So this is not my vest. This actually came from a buddy. Uh, we were talking about these and he mentioned how he's picking one up. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. We were both talking about uh, Jaeger core kits. And he was like, hey, I'll send it to you. You can check it out, review it, and then uh, forward it on to me. And I was like, word, let's do it. So let's jump into this guy. First thing first, you're going to notice these weird shoulders. So these are uh, Lamy suede shoulders with stock bolsters or stock stops. And the reason they have these big black shoulders on here, and it's not khaki, is this stuff will remain non-slip even when wet. And it helps you when shouldering your rifle it's kind of neat a little older idea but you got these bolsters and they kind of help you keep the stock in your shoulder well well shoulder weld um like that and then this material is just kind of tacky it's kind of interesting because so the right whoever used this obviously was a right-handed shooter because this side is very like uh rough and some of the some of the suede, lamy material is just kind of rubbing right off. You can kind of see it on my fingers, where this side is still extremely smooth. You can see some on the table. Yeah. Uh, still very smooth and uh, retains like the, just the soft feel, where this side feels very rough and abrasive. So obviously whoever used this was a right-handed shooter. Yeah, see, it's kind of flaking right off. Right-handed shooter, and it's has uh, seen some use. And we'll get into more of that in a moment of how you can tell it's seen some use. Three side release buckles, one zipper. We've got, what would you like to count for Sesame Street? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven rows of Molly Pals webbing. Um, you, you dissect this guy in half. Each one of these panels is identical, so it's seven and seven. Very big, generous loop fields. This is so you can set this guy up. This is meant to be kind of a jack-of-all-trades LBV to be worn over top your armor, and you're meant to put your whole fighting load on here and just kind of go. As you can see at the bottom, you've got these little little guys here. Uh, these snap and unvelcro, and that is for integrating a belt, like a um, gun belt. And then you can have your whole gun belt set up on here, and you have the integrated, so your whole your whole fighting load can be on here. Undo the belt, undo these Unzip, boom, drop it off. Uh, but you, that way you could keep your armor on and then you'd be good to go. This kind of setup was more early guat looking shit. This was like the hotness of the back when I first came in, kind of falling out of favor. It was heavily, heavily used by the Danes and the Danish Jaeger Corps guys. And that's what kind of turned me onto this. I liked their kit. I thought it looked really badass with their, I think it was like M84 camo and uh, this khaki vest. Please ignore the dog. And all the, uh, eagle pouches it would have on it and then they had their their danish uh body armor underneath it just looks fucking cool they had their super unique helmet and it was a neat kit and that's what we were talking about and now i got this guy normally you would just cover this guy just uh khaki eagle pouches if you want to get hardcore you would get the ones that have the danish labels but they're the same as these pouches this is a standard soflix uh pouch in khaki there's no real difference other than uh, the label back here it would say like Danish. Kind of kind of silly, but whatever. Go hard or go home, I guess. Um, khaki and khaki looks fantastic. This thing could be set up in so many ways, and it's kind of what makes these so awesome. Uh, let's flip it over talk about the back. So I'm a big dude. I'm a, not a small man. Uh, my buddy's a lot smaller than me, uh, so this is a medium. This adjusts out to fit me easily, so it's going to fit him wonderfully. Uh, the back panel seven rows just like the two front panels you could easily put uh eagle beaver tail on here like a uh, yodi which i think would look fantastic on this guy you've got and it would be useful uh you have a loop field back here for like a little like I don't know, ir tab or you could put some glint back here something like this a little homemade velcro cat eye i made you can stick that right there so your buddy can see you at night keep tab you when you're moving about that's kind of cool your adjustments are here. You got six of them, three on each side, and that's just for uh, girth. And then you've got these one wrap pieces that are sewn down there. I'm assuming that's to kind of police this shit down. 
but it seems like a lot. So I don't know for certain if that's what it's for. It looks like it. Looks like you would just kind of move this out, bring this down, and then kind of like one wrap it in place. But it seems excessive and it seems like it would slide out, but I don't know. It works ish. But that's a lot of one wrap for not a lot of webbing. But again, I'm a big dude, so maybe that's why. But it would work, I guess. Like I said, you do have this uh, Molly Field. You put a lot of accessories back here. One of the cool things is you have this. This is a tubular nylon strip that is a drag handle. And it's sewn down very firmly. It's got its own Velcro attachment point here. This can be used. You could actually grab this and yank on somebody and you're not going to rip it off or rip it because it is sewn all the way down. And I think that's great. The shoulder adjustments are Velcro right here. You can just adjust them as needed and you're good to go. Very simple adjustments, very easy. You got D-rings on the shoulders. You got two of them on each shoulder and yeah, that's it. So we'll talk about the inside now. So I mentioned how you got Molly on the back so you can run like a bladder or, a, or like a hydration or a pack or whatever. But you also have this big mesh pocket here. So this big mesh pocket is pretty cool because you could shove a bladder in there if you wanted to and leave your back completely slicked out and you wouldn't need anything on there. But you could still run water on your body if you wanted to. And I do think that's pretty awesome. Uh, you've got two map pockets uh, left and right. They're both, like I said, mirror images of one another. They are zippered. Now, this is the only thing I don't understand is each map pocket is Velcro shut as well. Very generously sized. You can hold a ton of shit in there. I'm not exactly sure why the Velcro is there. I have an assumption. I couldn't find any information online. I did, did, did some digging. Couldn't find any information. I'm assuming there was some sort of uh, Velcro in pouch here, like a holster or something. Uh, because a lot of these rigs of the time, of this the type of design, had internal holsters for them. That was kind of a feature. And I'm thinking Eagle may have had at, at some point, it may have just been lost to the memory hole. Um, I'll show you this side too, just so you know I'm not lying. Uh, some sort of holster insert or a pouch insert that went in here and you could just kind of Velcro it in place. But I don't know. But as you can see, both big mesh pockets. You can hold all sorts of bullshit in there that you need, and you'd be good to go. Overall, I think it's a pretty rad piece of kit. I think it's pretty cool. You can set yourself up with everything you need. For Airsoft, this would be really great. You can set this up with all the bullshit you need for a, a long, extended Milsim game. If you're going to do a Danish Jaeger Core kit, this is definitely a piece of kit you would want. Not necessarily for the newer multicam era. Well, even multicam would work, but this is just kind of a fantastic piece of gear. It would set you up right, and it's pretty much the quintessential like building block. Just for in generalities, great piece of kit. Holds a lot of stuff, sets you up right, and you can put your entire load on here, and you just be able to, if you don't want to wear it or need it anymore, drop it, take it off, very easy to do. And if you wore plates, boom, you've got them on underneath. You can separate your fighting load from your armor if you needed to. If you needed to just kind of go slick, you still keep your armor on, and you could get all the other shit off you, and I think that's pretty rad. Overall, I would recommend these if you can find one for a decent price. They kind of go a little uh, expensive at times. He got this one decent because it's got a couple damages. Like I said, a uh, cut strap here and on this side here. I've seen these go for around $150. That's considered a good price on the uh, secondhand market. I've seen them go as high as $300. I don't consider that a good price. I would probably pay the $150. Um, I don't think I would pay anything over uh, $170 for one of these just because it's cool, but it's not that cool. That's just me. Anyway, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate you. And I really thank you for taking the time to go this far. This is my newest video here. I think you would love this video over here. And if you like this content and you haven't already, you might want to subscribe right here. As always, to all my old subs, you guys are rock stars. Couldn't done without you. To all my new subs, thank you for taking a chance on me. I appreciate it. Until next time, get out there, guys. LARP hard, make some cool kits, try some new shit, and I'll see you on the field, hopefully. Take care.